A fixture is really just anything that couples your DUT to either the armature or the head expander or the slip table. Fixtures can be extremely complicated or they can be as simple as just using clamps. Now the first question you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself when you're designing a fixture is what type of material should you use? <laughs> a lot of people think that the best route to go is to use steel because it's rigid and it's strong, but this is actually not the case for vibration testing for a few reasons. Steel is very heavy. When you're performing a vibration or shock test, you're gonna to wanna to keep your weight as low as possible. And also steel has really poor damping characteristics. So if you think of hitting a steel object with a golf club, you're gonna have that feedback back through the club and into your hands. And steel actually performs very similarly during vibration testing, it's gonna ring. So if you do have to use steel, um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you use it only at very low frequencies and for uh, vibration profiles that are not very aggressive. So what you're gonna to wanna to use instead is materials that are lighter, and that have better damping characteristics. And the go-to for that is either magnesium or aluminum. Magnesium is probably the best option. It's got great damping characteristics. It's very light. The only problem with magnesium is it can be pretty expensive. So a good middle of the road is aluminum. Aluminum is what we use in our lab a lot of times. It's a good deal cheaper than magnesium. It is a bit heavier, but compared to steel, it's still quite a light material, and it's still got very good damping characteristics. Now, the next question that you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself is, how am I actually gonna join this fixture together? The best option in terms of preventing relative motion is going to be a fully cast fixture. Uh, unfortunately, that's not always the most realistic option because um, from a manufacturability standpoint, it's not the easiest way to make your fixture. And you also can't change up the configuration. Say you want to use your fixture for multiple different DUTs. It's really hard to do that with a cast fixture. To use a uh, welded fixture, to actual, actually weld those components together. Uh, this is still going to prevent relative motion quite well. But again, you're going to run into that option or that problem of not being able to change up the configuration, it's going to be hard to use a welded fixture for different DUTs. If you do work with a welded fixture, though, from a manufacturability standpoint, it can be a lot easier than a fully cast fixture. But you want to keep a few guidelines in mind. You want your, essentially, you just want those, um, those welds to be very thick. You want a thick bead size that's actually equivalent or greater than the actual material thickness that you're using for your fixture. So then your next best choice is to be is to actually bolt your fixture together. Technically, this is the poorest choice in terms of preventing relative motion, but it's your best choice if you want a fixture that's going to be able to be switched up for different DUTs. And it's what we use a lot of time, a lot of times. And um, it's fine to use a bolted fixture, but you do want to keep some guidelines in mind. First of all, you want really tight bolt spacing. You want to reduce that distance between bolts as much as possible because as you reduce that distance, you're gonna increase the resonant frequency of the fixture itself. You also want to counter bore all holes. And essentially this is just reducing the free length of the bolt itself. And the reason this is important is because believe it or not, during vibration testing, the free length of that bolt is actually gonna stretch a little bit during testing. And of course that's gonna allow some relative motion. So you wanna counter bore holes to reduce that length as much as possible. Another issue that you could run into with bolted fixtures is since we're using relatively soft materials for your vibration fixtures, you might be concerned about bolts actually pulling out of the fixture itself. So one thing you can do um, to help mitigate that issue is by using stainless steel inserts, and that's going to give you something more rigid to actually thread your bolts into. So these are just a few examples of some good uh, tried and tested vibration fixtures that we use a lot here at J.A. King. Um, the one on the left here is a bookend fixture. Bookend fixtures are um, very useful because it's a relatively simple design. They're quite rigid and you can use a bookend fixture oftentimes for a lot of different DUTs. In the middle, that's a basic cube fixture. 
cube fixtures are also very um, useful because, again, it's very rigid. It's relatively simple geometry. And cubes are also very helpful because you can utilize the different bases of that cube. So if you've got vertical and horizontal testing that needs to be performed, a lot of times what you'll have to do is rotate the entire drum of your shaker. And if you're using a cube, uh, you actually don't have to do that. You can just bolt your cube in the vertical orientation, and then you can move your DUT around to different faces of the cube. And that way you've reached all three orthogonal axes without having to change up the orientation of the shaker itself. On the right there, that's another example of a cube fixture. But the difference here is that there's actually been um, some holes bored out of the cube itself. And the reason for this is to reduce weight. A lot of times those cube fixtures can get pretty heavy pretty quickly. So an easy way to reduce the weight is just to bore out some holes. Unfortunately, once you bore out holes, you're going to run into some issues with rigidity. So uh, a good trick to keep up your sleeve is you can actually squirt damping foam into the voids of that cube, and that's going to increase the damping properties of the fixture itself. Now, it's important to keep in mind that it's not going to actually increase the resonant frequency of your fixture itself, but it is going to help to decrease the amplitude of the response when and if you do hit the resonant frequency of your fixture. So I also just want to point out uh, a few guidelines when you're designing fixtures. Um, you're going to want to avoid clamping when possible. I did mention clamping earlier in this presentation. Um, we do use clamping sometimes and you can use it, but you just have to be careful when you use clamping. You want to make sure that you use it mostly for tests that aren't very aggressive and especially tests at low frequencies. And if you do clamp, you want to make sure you take note of the exact placement of those clamps. That way you've got a good repeatable test. Um, and if you need to rerun anything, it's easy to do so in the exact same configuration that you ran it initially. You also wanna make sure that you keep your center of gravity as centered over the shaker as possible and as low as possible. And this is gonna help avoid um, causing any moment on the actual shaker itself. 